Hello gorgeous flower pots, it's only me, your Auntie Nelly. It's Sunday and it's time for me to service you. How are we all? Good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are watching me from. It is so lovely to be here with you on the 22nd of August. 2021 at 12 noon and it's a full moon this evening at two minutes past eight it is a full moon we will see the end of summer by welcoming the sturgeon moon and um, i'm big into the moon i love the moon uh, and i think my moods are ruled by the moon and the word lunatic came from, um, oh here we go, we're already on with uh, send me your WhatsApp number, absolutely not flower, or fee fucks. So, it's not a top Jojo Rose, I've just done this on Instagram, do you want to see? It's one of my dresses out of my collection, it's the uh, Mandela dress in pink, I have also got it in blue, but um, yeah, it's a dress, it's, um, it's an actual dress in my collection over at um, Ruby and Daisy, so there you go, and I do ship worldwide, so thank you very much, yes, it's absolutely stunning, I love it, it's a lovely day today, I'm getting to do Sunday service, um, I've got quite a lot of parcels coming today, because I've got a big photo shoot tomorrow, so if I do run away, it'll only be for a minute to answer the door, um, and then I'm at home all day, preparing for tomorrow's big shoot and um, hopefully I've got a friend calling round later which would be lovely. So there we go, so I've got my fan on, I've got my ice water, I'm having a bit of a, a flush earlier on Instagram. So there we go, yeah, summer's not quite over yet is it? And um, I'm not quite sure um, what is actually going on but it's been like autumn, but apparently it's going to be some nice weather coming. So, yeah, so tonight's a full moon. Uh, spiritual meaning and intentions. It's about gratitude, reaping, harvesting, flourishing, gumption, flexibility and perseverance. So don't give up. Um, so, yeah, so I, I love anything about the moon and I do follow um, the moon. Um, but, yeah, so... The full moon in any season, and the third is considered a blue moon, but this one's called the Sturgeon Moon, should you want to read up on it um, and be as boring as I am. So, your hair looks stunning, thank you. Yes, I have had it cut, and it has been an absolute doddle to get ready this morning. Um, and I think next time I might even go that little bit shorter. So, there we go. So Sunday service, I asked you to write into the page and you have not disappointed. They came through thick and fast. So let me tell you what happens on a Sunday service. You write into um, the page. I get the messages filtered through. Oh, one minute, my parcel's here, I'll be one minute. should not be disturbed again so that was the parcel um okay so oh yeah you're all right ricky don't worry all right my next door neighbor says he is um just going out for an hour so we've got peace and quiet because he's doing an extension so he's doing lots of drilling and stuff so um right sunday service what happens slow pops right into the page with the dear antonelli's it does come through anonymous, so you mustn't worry about your um, your identity. Um, any advice I give is purely for entertainment purposes. And if anybody comments on your comments here with prize giveaway competition inbox or whatever, it is a scam, don't fall for it. So I think without further ado, um, I think we should just get going with Sunday service, shouldn't we? I think we've got one or two now. Yeah, Postman Twat's just been with Parcel Bronwyn. At least now we know we will not be getting um, interrupted. So Parcel's man been. Ricky's told me that he's going to leave me alone for an hour and not do any drilling. So without further ado, let's go. Dear Auntie Nelly, I am so upset. My friend and I are both expecting our 
firstborn babies. They are due in November. Congratulations. Oh, right, but I told her the name choices I wanted for my baby many years ago, and my name choices have never changed. She said she didn't have any names, but has now said that she really likes the names that I have and is going to use them herself. I am so upset as she is due two weeks earlier than me, and inst instead of enjoying our time being pregnant together, I cannot even face her at the moment. How do I tell her to get her own names and not use mine? Wow. Okay, so... You've had these baby names since you were small. You've had your best friend since you were small. So she's known all along that, oh, when I have a baby, this is what I'm going to call it. You haven't changed your mind. Those are your names. And she hasn't got her own... Her own imagination to think of her own names. Because names that you want for your child, they're quite personal. They mean something. You either name your kids after relatives or you name your kids after something that's meaningful to you with your partner. You haven't changed your mind. The thing I would do here, I mean, I don't know if this has happened to anybody here, but when I was expecting Olivia, I had a boy's name the whole way through my pregnancy because I was convinced I'd have a boy. I didn't. <laughs> so when Olivia came out and they said, what, you're naming this beautiful baby? I went, Joseph Alexander. And they went, okay, well, it's a girl. So I said, okay, um, right, um, and I was like, um, 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 I'll call it Vivian, and everyone was like, Vivian, and I was like, yeah, I like the name Vivian, and they were like, I, I don't think you thought about it, and I was like, mm, maybe I haven't, no, and then my mum, my mum was in the room, and she was like, I really like Madeleine, and I was like, yeah, no, I don't like that. So anyway, I asked the midwife, and I said to the midwife, have you got any kids? And she said, yeah. And uh, I said, what have you got? She had a girl. I said, what's it called? She said, Olivia. I said, oh, I love the name Olivia. I said, because it reminds me of that baby. I said, I took film colour purple where she had to give her baby away, didn't she? And she was called Olivia. And plus Olivia is like, in Greek, uh, means peace. So that's where I got the name from. So anyway, so you choose your baby names, the your names. You, the names that you've chosen for your baby, it doesn't mean to say they don't exist in history. You don't have ownership of those names forever. They're not yours forever and a day. Other people are allowed to choose those names. So rather than upsetting yourself in the late stages of your pregnancy, because that's not something I want you to do to yourself or I want you to do to your friend or cause this rift, I'd just say, can we have a coffee? Uh, decaf off your slate, I guess, because you're pregnant, um, and just say, look, you know that I've had these names since I was little, and I don't mind you using these names, I don't mind it, I just thought that you might have your own names, you know, and I'm just a bit concerned that, you know, when we're talking about our kids, we'll not know which ones we're talking about, because, um, you know, we'll say which one. So rather than falling out, just say to her, I just, I, I'm just so flattered that you love the names that I've picked and you want them too. It's just that, you know, I, I just want, I just thought you might want to use your imagination and pick your own. If you want, I can help you and see what she says. And if she says no, because I really like them names and I'm using them, well, let her, let her. But then in the future, you know that she's not a friend to be trusted with information like that. Does that make sense? Is that a good answer? Because I can't really think what, it might, this might be another parcel. What else you could actually say to that? Because you can't stop people choosing names because they're not copyrighted. They're not copyrighted, are they? Names are just names, but it's a bit, it's a bit out of order, your best mate doing that, when they know that you've had that, them names since you were little. And I just want you to enjoy the rest of your pregnancy time together and not get yourself worked up or upset, you know, but have that conversation and just say, I really thought, I did really think that, you know, you'd be able to like, use your own imagination. I'm so flattered that you're using mine, but you know, do you want some help? Shall we have a look? And do you know what? You might go off them names and your baby might pop out and you think, mm, they don't 
even, they don't even look like that name now. And you might fall in love with a different name and think, God, because the names you think of when you're a kid, it, it, it changes, doesn't it? So, dear Auntie Nelly, two years ago I met and fell in love with a wonderful man. He has now asked me to marry him and wants us to move in together. Oh, that's nice. Congratulations. This should make me the happiest woman in the world, but there is a problem. Of course there is, otherwise you wouldn't be writing in. I am 29 and he is 58. Oh. My parents are very much against our relationship and won't even allow him in the house because they just call him a cradle snatcher. Oh. My friends say they don't understand why I'd want to be with a man who is almost an old age pensioner. <laughs> And never has asked us out as because they say it would like it would like being at an OAP's outing. Oh, that's a bit harsh. My sister is the only one who seems to accept us as a couple. And she says, if I'm happy, she's happy. I want to marry him and make our future together. But how can I when it means losing my friends and family? What should I do? 29 and he's what, 58, 29, 30. 30, 40, 50, 28, 29 years between, is it 29 years between you? I think there is, yeah. You're legal and he's legal and you can't help who you fall in love with and you, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. If this man at 59 is treating you with love and respect and he's making you feel like you're the only girl in the world and he's putting effort into the relationship and he's truly making you happy, I can't see why any parent would have a problem with somebody who absolutely adores their child. What is the problem with him being 58? Is he similar age to your parents? Are they thinking they may not get grandchildren? Are they thinking you're gonna be left a young widow? I think what we have to do is just sit down with our parents, you that means, and say, look, what, let me exhaust the avenues of your fears. Let's talk about it. Are you frightened about not having grandchildren? Are you frightened I'm going to be left with an old man who's going to be ill and he's going to like steal my, my mid 40s because I'm going to be look, looking after somebody with an old, you know, who's old? Um, are you worried that he's going to die and leave me a young widow? What, what, do you, what are all these things? Why are you calling him a cradle snatcher? What do you think he's snatching? Without facing these sort of questions head on and being there ready to address them this is always going to be a topic that's going to be really difficult and your friends and family are shying away they're just using insults and slurs because they don't really know what else to say because it wouldn't do for them now it might not do for them they might not find somebody at 58 attractive or want to fall in love with somebody the same age as the parents but you have and that's what's happened and at the end of the day, if you're happy, and I mean really happy, what the fuck has it got to do with anybody else? Because you can't live your life for your friends and your mum and dad and your family. You can't. When you shut your front door at night and it's just you and your partner, is that where your happiness lies? And sometimes we have to take a step back from people who are not willing to be our cheerleaders. If they're not willing to be on your team and champion you, and be there for you no matter what decision you make then do you really want people like that in your life as cruel as it sounds but life is very short and if they have got fears about your husband being a lot older and dying and leaving you a young widow i don't mean to be awful but you could die next week do you know what i mean i mean it's just one of those things it's you've got to speak to these people find out exactly what it is and face it head on and if you are still at the point then where um, you're not happy, they're not happy with your decision, then you've got to tell them, I will love you, I will always obey you, I will always respect you. But in this instance, I don't agree with you ruling my life. I am nearly 30 years old. This is the life I want to take. You either want to be part of it or I will thank you for everything you've done up to, for me up to now. But once I'm married to my husband, um, unless you can come with love for both of us, you're not welcome into my life. And that's what you have to do sometimes. It might make them think it might be the short, short shock because you're taking control and I think you need to take control. You need to take control of your life because it's your life and we only get one. 
And if we do it right, once is enough. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're all watching me from. I can see there's one or two joining. Dan Wilson keeps popping on and popping off. Are you all right, Flower? It shouldn't matter, says Saskia. Absolutely not. As long as you're legal, what does it matter? What does it matter? Would it matter to me who my Olivia brought home? Um, if Olivia brought home a boy, a girl, a transgender, somebody who fucking identifies as the Eiffel Tower, whatever it is, whatever it is, black, yellow, green, red, whatever, an alien. If that person is madly in love with my daughter as she is with them and they're so happy together and they're respecting each other, loving each other and wanting to build a future, what say have I got? What say have I got? I don't know how that person makes her feel. You can only trust in what your child's telling you and all you want for them is continued love and happiness because if the circle of life goes as it should, one day I won't be here to love my daughter, but hopefully she'll have a partner by her side who will be able to continue loving her. So I don't, I really don't see the issue, but hopefully I have that chat. Dear Antonelli, I am a shopaholic and I don't know how to stop or work. I love designer clothes and keep ordering items from the internet without any idea how I'm going to pay for them. Oh dear God. I just put, I just put every, oh, I just put everything on my credit cards and only just manage the minimum monthly payment. My wardrobes are full, yet I crave more. When shopping, it makes me feel happy and successful. But I am actually just a receptionist and very depressed. <laughs> I have recently been thinking about moving out of my rented flat and buy my own place, but not sure if I'd be able to get a mortgage considering the current state of my finances. I doubt you'd get a mortgage at the minute if you're struggling to make the minimum monthly payments on your credit cards because you leave, you live in a champagne lifestyle on a lemonade budget. You're trying to find happiness and fun and validation from these gorgeous designer clothes that are coming through your front door. What is it you're missing in life? And I think when we, you know, some people do feel that shopping is the best therapy. Okay, that's fine. However, can we afford to have that therapy? Because we all feel nice when we've got our hair done, we've bought a new frock, we've got some new shoes. If you're me, you know, you've gone and bought another lipstick that's probably very similar colour to the lipsticks you've already got 800 of. You know, things like that do bring you happiness, but it's only intermediate. It's only really, really tiny happiness, isn't it? Because then you've got the new, say you bought a designer blazer, you put the blazer on, it feels good. You take the blazer off, you put it back on the anger because you've no money to go anywhere in it. You go into your job as a receptionist and you said you're not happy. So let's actually break down what's going on in your life. I wouldn't even start thinking about a mortgage. I wouldn't even start thinking about that. I would start thinking about you and why you're turning to shopping as you do and it's turned into an addiction. There are lots of people out there who are in similar situations and they get themselves into these situations where then they think they can afford it at the end of the month, but something might happen and then you haven't got the monthly payment, you haven't got the minimum payment and then they're adding charges on and then next month it gets bigger. So it's just a vicious circle, isn't it? So I want you to start thinking about what it is that you're missing in your life. Because believe me, you could buy the whole of fucking Gucci. Unless you're happy in yourself and your life's happy, that's not going to serve you. It might do for five minutes, but what's, what's the point in getting yourself in all this debt for five minutes fun? So where are you working? You're only a receptionist. Have you got aspirations to do anything else? Have you got aspirations to maybe do something else? Do you want to train um, in maybe a career? Have you thought about um, maybe changing your job, looking at different things? Um, are you single? Do you live on your own? You know, have you thought about maybe you could go abroad for a bit and work abroad? Um, you know, you could go and do something like uh, be an English teacher in Africa or there's lots of things. If I were a young single girl, I'd be there and everywhere like chlamydia, but I'm not. Anyway, so, but we've got to find what it is you're missing. 
because you're missing? Is it your social circle? Is it your family? Is it your friends? Is it the fact that you haven't got a love in your life? Something is missing for you to want to keep replacing it with goods. So what I would say today is if you're watching this Sunday service, your credit cards, go and put them in a tub of water and put that tub of water in the freezer. Freeze the credit cards. Go and put them in the freezer because it'll be a damn sight better for you, out of sight, out of mind, in the back of the freezer, you can't use them again. Do not be buying any more clothes because once we start on that vicious cycle of debt and then we can't actually pay for our monthly payments, you know, it's not going to do your credit score any good. Also, I want you to go and tell your GP. Go and say to your GP, listen, I've got a little bit of an addiction here and I, I, I'm happy to say I've got an addiction, but it's not actually harming me physically, but it is mentally, what can I do about it? And your GP will be able to signpost you to lots of different avenues um, to get that help that you need and to start looking at why. Why? Because it was only in lockdown that I started looking at my addiction and I'm still not got the full answers, but therapy is working absolutely fabulously for me. I still fall off the wagon sometimes, but I'm doing okay. So anybody out there who's living a champagne lifestyle on a lemonade budget, it's because there's something missing in the life and we need to go back to basics and find out what it is that we're missing. And <laughs> no amount of clothes, jewellery, cars, houses, means fuck all, it's just things. Happiness is in yourself, you've got to serve yourself. So it's about time that you started looking after you. So go to your GP, freeze the credit cards and take it from there. You won't be first and you won't be last, sweetheart, I promise you. Dear Auntie Nelly, my beautiful old dog, Hendrix, oh, died six months ago and I am devastated. Of course you are. He was always with me whenever I, wherever I went or whatever I did. And as I live on my own, he was my best friend and I would talk to him all the time. When I, want, when I walked in, people would talk to me. When you have a dog, it makes people stop and talk. It does. I am so lost without him and so lonely. It's made worse by the lack of understanding of those around me. I can't believe that my friends have been so insensitive and have hardly mentioned my loss. I have thought about getting another dog but just don't feel that any other dog could replace him. Thank you in advance. Any ideas you can give me? Oh, sweetheart. Oh, I'm so sorry that your gorgeous little dog went over Rainbow Bridge. Before I had Hartley, my Hartley Blue, who's nine years old and a Bichon Freeze and lives in that there London with my daughter, I didn't really understand the pet connection because I've never had a pet. And I used to hear people say, my dog's passed away, my cat's passed away, my hamster's passed away, my goldfish has passed away, and being really upset. And I think, oh, for the love of Jesus. The minute I got Hartley Blue at eight weeks old, I'm telling you now, if anybody had have even looked at him wrong, I'd have fucking stabbed the fuckers. Let me tell you. Your little babies, they're your babies. Anybody would think that I gave birth to Hartley Blue. He's my little baby boy. He is part of the family. Of course you are grieving. Of course it's only been six months and it doesn't matter that he was a dog. It is no different. He was your best friend in all the world. Hartley is my best friend in all the world. He never says a word to me, but I say everything to him. So I understand your pain and your loss. I can't even think of the day that Hartley Blue has got to go over Rainbow Bridge. It really upsets me. Have you thought, and, and obviously I totally agree, when you have got a dog, people do stop and talk. I go to London and walk Hartley round all the parks and people stop. Apparently people in London don't speak. Yeah, they do. But they speak more to you when you've got a dog. They are, they're very sociable and they do, you can go around the park, you get to know the dog walkers, you know, have you thought about going to your local shelter and asking if there's any dogs there that you can help walk, you know, get yourself out for a couple of hours, a bit of fresh air will do you good and plus then you're helping animals who are in a shelter who need people, the public to go around and help, they do need people to go around and help them, maybe walk them for a few hours a week, nobody's saying 
that you have to get another dog if it doesn't feel right. A lot of people do, they replace the animal they've lost because they feel like they've lost their arms and they just don't know what to do. Um, you know, and they can't live without having an animal in the home. So there's no right time and wrong time. It's what's right for you. But I will say, it, a, a dog isn't for everybody, depending on your lifestyle. But if that's what you've got used to, get into a pet shelter close to you and don't be afraid of talking about your loss. There are bereavement companies out there. There are people online that can help you um, when you've lost a pet. Some people will look at you like you're daft, like I used to before Hartley, but that's okay. They don't understand and aren't they lucky? Aren't they lucky that they don't understand what you're going through? Because it's absolutely awful, it really is, and I really feel for you. So get the help that you need. There's lots of bereavement support out there for pet loss. And get yourself into a local shelter near you and ask if you can be a volunteer. Can I help you a couple of times a week? Can I take some of these lovely little pups out for a walk? I'm happy to help. And as things start going on and things get moving a little bit more, you may find that you may have a connection with one of the little doggies that you start walking and he may become your new baby. Because that's what they are, aren't they? They're our fur babies. They're our little babies. I mean, when people say to me, oh, have you got any kids? I say, yeah, I've got a daughter. She'll be 26 in October. And I've got a nine-year-old little boy. And they go, wow, that's an age gap. And I go, yeah, no, yeah, he's a Bichon freeze. And they laugh. But he is, he's my little boy. He's my little boy. And I absolutely adore him. And I, you, can't, you can't put it into words, can you? So I'm sure you can't put it into words how it feels with this loss. So get yourself to a local shelter. And don't, don't feel daft or silly. And the friends and family who are, who are being insensitive, well, lucky them. Lucky them that they don't know what it's like to lose. Um, it's a bit bright now, isn't it? Can you still see me? Hi, Auntie Nelly. I have been seeing the man for the last six months. Everything's seen fine, but lately he resents me. He wanted to spend any time with my daughters. Oh, heck. My daughters are aged 27 and 29 and I made it clear to him that from the very start that they were, what, what do you make it clear, a huge part of my life. Both of them have left home now and I try to see each of them at least once a week or once, once a week for a day or an evening to catch up on what's been happening. My boyfriend though gets quite irritated. If they ring when I am with him, he shakes his head and says, I'm going to visit and says, oh, he huffs and puffs if I say I'm going to visit them. He never asks how they are or asks if we should visit together. He has no children of his own. He is 54 years old. What can I do as I can see this being a deal breaker? Absolutely, it's a fucking deal breaker. I don't even, I won't even put pen to paper. My daughter is not a big part of my life. I'd be lying if I said that. My daughter is my life. She is my life. Nothing and nobody will ever take precedent over my baby girl, who's 26 in October. And yes, I am entitled to live my own life. Of course I'm entitled to live my own life. Yeah, I'm a 47-year-old woman, footloose, fancy free. But whatever happens in my life, my daughter will always come first. Always, over anything, man, work, family, friends, anything. She's my number one. And if he can't respect you for that and can't respect the relationship you have with your daughters who've been here a damn sight longer than he has, there's the door flower. Fuck off through it. Don't darken my doorstep again. Because if you allow this behaviour, the tutting, the puffing, the sighing, the... Oh, have you got to go and see your daughters? Well, yeah, I do. God forbid anything happens to one of your daughters and they have to come and live with you for a while. What will he do then? He has to accept you for all of you. And if he doesn't accept that your daughter's a part of you, you can't do that. You can't be so controlling into somebody's life and saying, well, I love you, but like this, but not like that. So off he fucks now. You've only been together six months. So yeah, you might do a bit of crying. It might hurt for a bit, but is it not better six months in than 18 months in? Get fucking rid. It's an absolute red flag and it's an absolute deal breaker. I think you already know that. You just needed somebody to just 
confirm it for you. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine. I cannot imagine somebody saying, oh God, is that your daughter again on the phone? Or, oh God, are you going to see your daughter? Yeah, fucking hand flower. Yeah. And plus, I wouldn't want him to come. When he said he's never asked, can I come too? Well, I wouldn't want him to come with that fucking attitude. I wouldn't want that kind of man around my door, so I wouldn't want to introduce him. I wouldn't him, I'm him. I wouldn't let him have the privilege of meeting my daughter. No. Get fucking red. Dear Auntie Nelly Sunday Service, please, I love your work and you're doing an amazing job. Oh, thank you. My ex-wife and I divorced two years ago. She had multiple affairs at work and walked out leaving me to look after two very young children. Okay. The lies and drama for her, from her has been unreal. I could write a bestseller and give EastEnders a run for its money. Aha! We are amicable for the kids, but she has no boundaries. Calls every day, would like no, would think nothing of popping in for a brew. I don't feel like I'm moving in, moving on with my life as she's a constant presence and reminder of the past. What can I do to move on and build a life and move on without her? Well, you need to stop her coming round for a fucking brew. She's not your fucking mate, she's your ex. Who had multiple affairs and left you fucking shit and walked out on her kids. So, she ain't your fucking mate, is she? What's she popping in for? Fuck that. She can come in when she's seeing kids, when you've got an arrangement in place saying, right, you can see Polly and Pippa on a Tuesday at three o'clock. So, up she rocks at five to three, texts the kids and brings them back at five. She don't even have to really fucking come in. You're only doing that out of courtesy. And you're doing it because you feel tight on kids while it's the mum I've let her in. Fuck off. You choose to walk on through that door and flounce off out. So you'll only flounce on in when I say so. So you've got to put your boundaries down. You've got to say, Oi, I don't mind. You see, kids. So why don't we now come to an agreement when you can see them? Because I don't want you popping in and popping out, Flower. We're no longer together and yet me mate. You're the mother of my children. So I don't mind for one moment you having contact with them on my terms, when it fits around our lifestyle, because you're now a single woman out there doing what you want, so you've got to sort of fit into us. But other than that, no, I don't want you popping in for a brew. I've got my own life to live. I might be, I might be here seeing somebody. I might have a date night. You know, I might be busy. You can't just pop in and stick kettle on flour. End of chat. So that's how you'll start moving on with your life because you will be sat there thinking, well, is she going to just fucking call today? Is she, you know, and then ring out door, oh, is it her again? Once you've left, you've left. And I don't think she's doing this because you're allowing her to. And when things happen to us in our life, it's because we allow it to happen. So stop allowing it. Put your foot down. Don't be a walkover. It's absolutely fine for you to put in those restrictions for the benefit of you and your kids. Kids love a routine, absolutely. They, they thrive on it. So if they know that mummy's coming on a Tuesday, mum comes on a Tuesday. Not mum comes whenever she fucking wants. Life don't work like that. She walks out, she's made a bed, she needs to fucking lie on it and hopefully it's a bed of nails. Dear Auntie Nelly, if that's okay. Yeah, it's okay to call me that, yeah. Our family member passed away a few weeks ago. Oh, bless you. And I can't bring myself to go to their final goodbye. Oh, heck. We should have chosen our family holiday. We would have told them. And they are not happy. As you can imagine, we are heartbroken. But we will be doing stuff while we are there as they should have been with us. Please help. Hey. Right, I think, were well, you going on your holidays with somebody, family who's died and then you you have to still go on holiday but you don't want to go on holiday because they're not coming because they're dead? Is that what you're saying? Because this person who's passed away, life is for the living. Age is privileged denied to many and we've got to carry on living. So if, if it's a case of you don't want to go on holidays because you've been missing that person... You can either get your money back, cancel it, refer it to a later date, or still go on the holiday, but think of it like as a memory of that person and what they would have enjoyed doing. 
Um, if you're not going to enjoy your holidays because you're grieving, then don't go. I think that's what you're asking. Is that what you're asking? I'm not sure. We've chosen our family holiday, but we can't imagine going as we're heartbroken. I, I don't know. I don't know. We can't bring ourselves to go to their final goodbye. Right, I don't understand that. I'm ever so sorry. Um, right, I don't get it. I'm going to move on. Dear Auntie Ellie, I am 47. Ooh, so am I. Ooh. No, I don't think funeral is taking place when they're, not, when they're on their holiday. Our family member passed away a few weeks ago and, and we can't bring ourselves to go to their final goodbyes. We have just chosen our family holiday. As you can imagine, we are heartbroken because we'll be doing stuff that they would have liked to do. Can you write in again? Because I don't know whether it's, it might have even pulled it through anonymously and missed off a fucking question. I'm 47. I've been with a guy for almost five years. We are both divorced, but this was particularly messy, which left him bankrupt. And he now lives with his mum. We got engaged three years ago and I had to buy my own ring. Oh, because he didn't have any money. I would really like to one day get married. But he don't seem that bothered. And he seems quite happy with the way things are. We do not live together. I moved back in with my mum and dad also. I have discussed getting married with him and he says he would not like to but hasn't got the he would like to but hasn't got the money. It's not like I want to get married tomorrow, maybe in a couple of years. Am I being unreasonable? I need an end goal. I love him very much, but I'm afraid of resentment building up over this issue. I'd love some advice. Thank you, Nelly. He didn't even have any money to buy a ring. He's moved back in with mum. He'd like to get married, but he's got no money to plan a wedding. Right, it, does he work? Is he working? What's he doing with his money? Have you got a joint account where you can both start saving a little bit? Because then that to me is like, he's being serious about it. So it's actions rather than words. Because he's not really had to engage you, has he? Because you bought your own fucking ring. So it's not like he's gone out of his way. It wouldn't matter to me if it were a fucking Haribo ring. It's, the, it's not about the price of the ring, is it? And if it had wrote into me, I've got a fucking collection of Aero Wangs upstairs. <laughs> he could have had one. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, so what is he actually doing? If he's just sat at his mum's fucking wanking it off, and not doing fuck all about taking the relationship to the next step. Because to me, I'm a bit old fashioned. You're engaged to be married, not just engaged to be engaged to wear a pretty ring. So what is he actually doing about it? If he doesn't start doing things where his actions show what his words mean, then what's the fucking point? What is the point? So, yeah, I just said to him, look, you need to start. We need to start a savings. For the wedding, you put so much in, I'll put so much in and uh, see if he does. And if he doesn't, then he's obviously not bothered about marrying you, is he? Not bothered about getting wed to you. And, um, you know, you haven't got an end goal. And if that's the case, sounds like a right fucking loser. No money, living with his mum, 47. Fuck him off, flower. Dear Antonelli, I'm in love with a married man. Oh, no. The situation has been going on for years. I know how wrong it is, and I truly hate women like me. He says he loves me, can't be without me, and wants to be with me, but can't leave his wife. Oh, that old chestnut. As he can't bear the cause and upset and hurt, he will cause his family. I know he is very torn. Okay. And I get upset about that. I know I will be judged by you and your followers. I've called it off several times, but I really do love him. I can't help it. As completely wrong as it is, I don't want to let him go. However, I also don't want to be the other woman anymore. He's breaking my heart and the guilt is crippling me. I really don't know what to do. Please, 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 please help me. Oh. 
I don't want to be an absolute bastard about my reply. And any advice I do give is always for entertainment purposes. But let me just tell you now. This man is having his cake and fucking eat it, flower. And you're quite willing to be the fucking cherry on the top of the icing. Of course he doesn't want to leave his wife and cause all that hurt and upset. Of course he doesn't want to leave the children while they're so young and they're still in high school. These excuses are the excuses that they all come out with. You are the woman that will always be the side dish. Why don't you have enough self-respect, self-esteem and confidence to know that you are the main fucking course? And if he can't treat you like the fucking main course, then he needs to go and find a fucking appetizer elsewhere because it ain't you. Walk away as much as it will hurt you and make you cry into your ice cream and popcorn at night or whatever it is that's your comfort food. You have to walk away for your own self-dignity, for your own fucking self-worth. Where is your self-worth? Get back your power. He does not belong to you. Yeah, these things happen and I know they happen. Some people have a first, they leave the partners, get together and they're happy forever in a day. Very fucking good. But he was never going to be yours in the first place. Firstly, he is somebody's father and somebody's husband, somebody's son, brother, friend, colleague, you're always going to be at the bottom of that pile and do you know why? Because you're allowing himself, you're allowing yourself to be 50 best, not even first best, second best, third best, fourth best, you know, you are always going to be at the bottom of that pile. Walk away and just think, if you can love the wrong man so fucking much can you imagine if you give yourself the chance how much you could love the right man oh can you imagine can you imagine what that love would feel right when you're giving it to the right person walk away walk away now walk away while you've still got a little tatter of self-consciousness because you've brought into me Walk away. You are not a side dish. You are not an appetizer. You are not an afterthought. You are the start of the main course and the fucking dessert. Walk away. Walk away now. And if you don't, I have no empathy, no sympathy. You make your own bed. Once again, may you lie in it and I hope it's a bed of fucking nails. End of. That's been today's Sunday service. Have you enjoyed it as much as I have? I've enjoyed it very, very much. Thank you very much for joining me. Wherever you have joined me from, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. If anybody comments on your comments with prize giveaway competition gift, it is a scam. And any advice I have given on today's show was purely for entertainment purposes. Please keep writing to the page because without your dear Antonelli's there are no live shows. Thank you so much for joining me. Whatever you do with the rest of your day, make sure you enjoy it. And I'll see you all very, very soon.